So uh, we, we all know everybody is super busy, so we really appreciate you guys being here. And some of you travel great distance, and you're investing your most valuable asset with us, which is your time. So um, today we have a couple of folks here from, uh, uh, from Bayhab, Brian and Mark. Thank you for your support, and welcome us to uh, Bayhab. And we also have teams from uh, NASA Johnson Space Center, from Marshall, and uh, appreciate your support and long-term partnership. Also, our friends and partners from uh, Embryus, Sandia National Lab, Blue Origin, Axiom Space, Beta, BEA, Greenworks, Core Insurance, the list goes on and on, Hazmat Group folks, firefighters from Houston, uh, and all the way from New York, uh, our finest from New York, FDNY. Um, these are first responder folks that we have learned a lot uh, that how we can help them, and they are protecting our lives every day. So. Thank you so much for being here today. <clears throat> and um, we're gonna have a lot of technical presentation and demonstration throughout the day. Uh, I'm especially excited about when our partners are uh, leading the presentation and the panel discussions, like the Empress presentation that's gonna happen. And that's how and we're gonna present how we're working together to leverage their high energy silica nanocells to create batteries with the highest energy density and power for electric aviation. Also Bob Richard, Green, uh, Greenworks folks and the Hazmat Group partners are going to give a panel discussion about how our SafeX platform is gonna work with insurance companies to lower their lithium ion battery risk and also save money for all the stakeholders. And all these presentations and panel discussions lead to an important topic of the day for us, which is what can we do together to make you more successful? To me, this is why we're here today, to make you, our customers, partners, and our stakeholders more successful. So I've been working in the uh, technology industry for over 30 years, and this is certainly the most exciting time in my career because we're now at the cross-section of three multi-generational megatrends in technology. First is the privatization of the space economy and the NASA's mission to go back to the moon. That's fueling a tremendous growth in the space economy for the next 10 years. It's expected to grow to about $1.8 trillion. We believe Cooler One space battery will participate in this growth to be the energy source uh, for this uh, new industry. AI is driving insatiable appetite for energy. A chat GPT search costs 10 times more energy than a Google search. An AI data center power consumption is expected to grow 160% over the next few years. Now all you hear about is in the news is about how we're gonna go literally go nuclear to power all these AI data centers from Microsoft, Google, Oracle's, the likes. And do you know that 40% of data center power consumption is for cooling of the chips and equipment? and we expect to lower this energy consumption with our Cooler Zero Vibe technology. By removing vibration for the cooling fan, Cooler Zero Vibe fans will consume less power, make less noise, and last longer. There are over a billion fans sold, a year, every, uh, sold in the world every year. Our mission is to make every fan a perfectly balanced fan with this technology. The transition to electrification is powered by battery and renewable energy. We believe that Cooler One and the SafeX platform is gonna to contribute to this transition and be a big growth driver for us. So today, we will show you how we're building a next generation energy management platform to power these mega generational trends for efficiency, safety, and sustainability. So I just share with you uh, our vision about the future of Cooler. The next few slides, I'll tell you uh, some stories about our past history and the background story about some of the technologies that we're gonna present today. Uh, this is the internal short circuit device. It's invented by NASA Johnson Space Center team and the NREL team in 2017. So that they can, they invented the technology so they can test the battery in the astronaut's backpack. It was, uh, I think it was uh, in, uh, uh, the NASA invention of the year. We learned about this device from Dr. Eric Darcy, us uh, talk in the International Battery Seminar in 2017. And we became so fascinated by it, we became the exclusive licensee for that technology in 2018 and start commercializing in 2019. Since then, we've worked with over 100 partners and customers to implant this ISC device into their batteries 
and serve markets such as electric vehicles, electric planes, e-bikes, drones, power tools, and energy storage products. Some of you are customers of this product for us uh, here, so thank you so much, and thank you, NASA, for such a great technology. Next is uh, the FTRC. Uh, this is another NASA invention, and also won the Invention of the Year Award. It is invented by our very own Will Walker, right there. <laughs> and um, we, we took a license of this in 2022, and then we took an exclu uh, we like it so much, we took an exclusive license for this for the large format in 2023. So now we're serving some of the largest commercial customers in the world for their battery testing needs with this technology right here in our brand new uh, testing room, which you will get a tour of uh, later on today. So thank you, NASA, again, for such great invention and our customers for your partnership. Um, next is our automated cell screening. So this fully automated cell screening line is to meet the NASA JSC working instruction 37. And there's an interesting story behind this. Uh, in 2018, <clears throat> I was on a trip with Eric Darcy to South Korea to meet with Samsung and LG to try to convince them to implant ISC cells into the battery cell. So just so you know, it's not an easy trip. It's not an easy task to convince the cell makers to, to do this. So after we left Samsung on the way to LG to take our mind of how difficult it was, Eric started talking about, you know, NASA wanted to build a strategic battery reserve to remove battery supply chain risks. Uh, in case the suppliers decide not to or cannot supply battery cells to our most critical application anymore, how do we secure um, the battery supply over the next few years? We need a strategic battery reserve. I thought it was a great idea. And then again in 2019, Eric and I on a trip to Japan trying to convince Murata and Sony battery cell to supply battery and ISC cells for us. And this time we had a gentleman from Navy with us. Um, this time was more successful. We convinced Murata and Sony um, that to supply ISC cells and battery cells for us. During that trip, Eric and the gentleman from Navy talked about the work instruction 37 and the strategic battery reserve idea again. This time I thought to myself, we got to do this. So four years later, and after X millions of dollars, um, we built the industry's first fully automated battery cell screening line with, uh, uh, to be compliant for uh, work, work Instruction 37. It's now fully operational in our California facility. We're serving NASA and DOD customers for this, and we're planning to move this to Texas in 2025 to be closer and to be part of the strategic battery reserve in Texas and to supply cruise space mission and the DOD customers. And uh, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna show a lot of, we're gonna see, you're gonna show, see a lot of demo about our SafeX platform. We developed this technology for uh, NASA to store batteries on the International Space Station. Um, and we work with the JSC team, David Dalafonte, and also Lidos, uh, our neighbor over there. Um, it was launched into the International Space Station in November of uh, 2019. Uh, today, you're going to see how the new commercial version of this product uh, is going to be able to handle batteries 10 times the size of what's originally on the, uh, on the, uh, to serve the ISS. And we'll discuss with you how we're serving customers from recyclers, EV manufacturers, power tool manufacturers, and insurance carriers. And uh, as you can see, we, we, we love NASA technology. <laughs> And we love working with NASA, and, um, and we love taking these space-proven technologies into commercial applications. Um, now here's uh, Cooler Vibe, Cooler Zero Vibe. We, we acquired this technology in 2022 
Uh, before that, it was used to balance military helicopters for over 20 years. One example is that there is a $39 million Bell attack helicopter for the Marine Corps, um, brand new. They flew for less than 100 hours, but then they, then they spent 2,000 man hours trying to fix it because the wings were vibrating too much. Uh, they almost had to scrap the whole bird because they couldn't fly anymore. We got a hold of this, we worked with their team, and within a couple of days, we balanced it, and now it's been flying ever since. So we saved taxpayer um, almost thir uh, you know, $40 million. And now we've developed a quarter zero vibe technology to eliminate vibration in cooling fans. Uh, uh, by elimination of that, we are uh, eliminating wasted energy. And uh, we're making cooling fans for AI servers more efficient, use less energy, and make less noise. And because of the lack of vibration, there's less wear and tear in the system and make them last longer. So our goal is to take this technology and make these fans a balanced fan for every single one of them. Um, go back to memory lane a little bit more. It's our thermal management uh, heritage. Our PCM heatsink was on the space shuttle program in 1998. And the same technology is on the Mars rover Perseverance right now. And Mike Carpenter, where's Mike? Mike is somewhere, oh, Mike, right there. He's our VP of thermal product. He's been working on these technology for over 40 years. And uh, he's still designing and building new heat sinks for the next generation missile programs. Uh, he's got his fingerprint on the Mars rover, International Space Station, Mercury Messenger, Venus Lander. Uh, he's probably the man whose work has been in space more than anybody else. So Mike Elon Musk is nothing on you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the good fortune of knowing Mike and uh, Dr. Tim Knowles uh, back in the day, who before I knew them, they had been working on this for over 20 years. And I started Cooler with Tim and Mike in 2013 to take these space technology into commercial, uh, into commercial applications. So 10 years later, we're just getting started again. Uh, a little bit of background by myself. Uh, I came to the US when I was 15 years old with my family from Shanghai in 1986. I went to Homestead High School in Cupertino, California. Turned out the same high school that Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak uh, went to. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I went to UC Santa Barbara, University of California, Santa Barbara, undergrad and master's degree in electrical engineering and computer science. Then I worked for uh, Hewlett Packard after, after that, and that's how I started my uh, technology career almost 30 years ago. And uh, my first job in high school, you know, I think I was uh, second year, junior year in high school, second year I came to the States. Uh, I got a job called a market research analyst uh, in 1988. So for those of you too young uh, to know what a market research analyst is, I searched on ChatGPT and I found this. <laughs> so obviously this looks exactly like me 36 years ago. So I worked in the mall with a clipboard and stopped people by asking them, excuse me, can I ask you a question? And if they say yes, then I'll ask them, you know, mark your research questions. So, so it's almost like survey monkey, but with the real person, me. So <laughs> does that make me a monkey? That's the question. No. <laughs> So as you can imagine, I'll get no probably 95 plus percent of the time. So but I, what I <clears throat> learned from the experience is that you never get discouraged by no. And developed what my wife would call very thick skin, you know? So, but for me, I loved every minute of it because you know, it paid more than flipping burgers. And I got to learn how to speak English and practice it and do it very quickly. <clears throat> So what I learned my first job 36, 36 years ago is all about asking the right question. So today is all about us presenting you what we're doing and ask you this most important question. How can we work together to make you more successful? So thank you, and I look forward to speaking with every one of you and get to know each other throughout the day. So thank you so much.